Hi, I'm Jeff Roosevelt. I work at Kendall at Hanover in Hanover, New Hampshire, and my project is, for older adults only, a directory. In the United States, about 56 million people are over the age of 65. This number will continue to grow. I want to tell you about a need many of these older adults share. It's the need to find reliable services and care in a timely manner, especially during this pandemic. When my father fell ill, he was in and out of various facilities for over a year. My family needed extra support to take care of things that he typically handled. And when he passed away, my mother was on her own and she had a lot on her plate. She also couldn't afford all the maintenance and upkeep that was required on the home, so the house had to be sold. She also could no longer drive to go to the store or go to her doctor appointments. All of this while she was coping with the loss of her partner of over 50 years. My brother and sisters are spread across the country and we knew she needed help and we each tried in our own way to do what we could to become educated on the best solutions for mom. From time to time, even with her loving children trying to give her sound advice, she would want to take the advice of someone she would see on TV. And yes, she fell victim to a scam or two that we know of. So what is there out there for our mom to make life easier for? As an adult child, what is there out there that we can use to help? Well, you're probably familiar with the Aging Resource Centers and these agencies are great resources for home health care services and transportation. But what about support with all those other business transactions that so many of these 56 million older adults are involved in? What if there were a directory that could identify businesses that were older adult friendly and maybe also alert them to scams? There are national directories for everything, for all types of audiences, but there is no national directory that offers older adult friendly services to take care of people like my mom. I ask all of you in your own way to think about how something like this would benefit the people you serve. Now think about how this might benefit you and your family. It's finding the right services for older adults that is worth collaborating for from all of us here at Leading Age. Thank you. My name is Garrett Sackey. I'm from Wellspring a life plan community in Greensboro, North Carolina, and I'd like to talk to you about actively speaking out about older adults. Have you ever watched the news or read an article in the newspaper about our industry and thought, they just don't have all the pieces, or if only they knew the whole story, they could give such a better story. The news is increasingly relying on the associated press stories and national coverage to be piped to our local news stations for local issues. And to be honest, our local news companies just aren't able to generate enough local content which would represent our realities. So what if we, as leaders in aging services, become local experts, the storytellers for our industry? At Wellspring, we had a resident do just that. He got in contact with some local reporters and writers and told them about all the things going on in our community in 2020 during this pandemic. He told them all the great heartwarming stories that we had going on in our community, as well as some of the challenges and difficulties that he as an older adult was facing. It was enlightening and it showed two sides of the story that the national media often misses. So why don't we as leaders in our industry take leadership and control the narrative of the news about our industry. I think so often we hesitate out of fear, fear that we might become a soundbite, that our comments might be used out of context as so often happens to leaders around the country. And let's be honest, in 2020, we've been focused on keeping our communities safe and our residents alive. So this is really dropped as a priority on our list, but I challenge you to raise the priority for a cause that will benefit our communities, our residents, and the broader community as a whole. 
I challenge you to join me in becoming the local expert, the local storytellers, as we really have more experience in this industry than anybody else. Let's tell our story. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Marcy Salzberg. I'm from Parker Health Group, and my ALP is Healing for Healthcare Heroes. Let's go back to a moment in time when we used to travel on airplanes. You may remember the flight attendant safety presentation. Always secure your mask first before assisting someone else. In aging services, the problems created by COVID-19 have been like nothing we've ever seen or experienced in our lifetimes. Through this though, I have not been able to stop myself from thinking about one of the bright spots. For the first time ever, the role of the essential care partner has not only been noticed, but honored, revered, and celebrated. We started calling them heroes. These heroes though, are not without their kryptonite. The emotional toll COVID-19 has plagued upon these care partners has not been fully understood. And so I ask you to step back onto that airplane for a moment and think about the lesson we learn each time we fly. We need to take care of ourselves so that we can care for others. Healing for Healthcare Heroes is an initiative to support the psychosocial needs and well being of all employees. It is driven by the idea that the elders who live in our communities deserve the very best care possible because they have been suffering. Social isolation, the cessation of routine family visits, and loss of life of close friends cannot be forgotten, and therefore, their caregivers need to become superheroes to meet their physical, emotional, and spiritual needs. Channeling some of the work we have done over this past year in the Academy, while partnering with HR, Talent, and the Rutgers University School of Social Work, I met with small groups, both virtually and in person. I created a structured but safe and supportive setting to get people talking or journaling about their feelings. We spend time during each session to talk about self-care and how to practice more of it. Looking towards the future, whether or not COVID-19 continues to remain with us, I will cultivate a culture of self-care within my organization, a culture where we are encouraged to take care of ourselves so that we can give the best care possible to the elders who need us the most. Good evening, this is Amy Schnaber. I'm with Leading Age New York, and my project is Diversity at the Decision Table. Many of our care providers on the front lines of the COVID pandemic are people of color, and sadly, the pandemic has disproportionately impacted their lives. Members of our aging services community and their families are struggling every day with systemic racism and painful indignities of discrimination and threats of violence in their community. Indeed, they are fighting both a health pandemic and a racism pandemic. We all must work to acknowledge and rectify the pervasive racism that exists in our lives, our local communities, and at work. As nonprofit providers, we must strive to eliminate racial and ethnic disparities in our own workplace. I believe the first step is to recognize the racial and ethnic diversity of our direct care staff and the people they serve is often not reflected in the leadership of the aging services organizations themselves. When I visit providers across the state, there's a lot of rich diversity among culinary, housekeeping, maintenance, and direct care staff. And unfortunately, the executive and leadership teams often don't reflect that same diversity. My idea is to help providers identify barriers in best practices, education, and resources so that they can be more intentional about developing the diversity of their leadership teams and creating a more inclusive workforce culture. My hope is that I can help providers recognize and overcome the institutional biases in their recruitment practices and help them create culturally appropriate growth opportunities and social supports. Nonprofit providers are committed to provo providing innovative and quality services for the aging and growing research shows both from economists and researchers that diverse groups are more innovative and productive. And increasing the diversity at the decision table is an important step in furthering that goal. Thank you. 
Lessons from the past, lessons for the present. Helping Holocaust survivors share their experiences with the next generation. Hello, my name is Hanan Simchon, and I am the Vice President of Holocaust Survivor Programming at Self-Help Community Services in New York, New York. I want to introduce you to Mr. A. His family was murdered by the Nazis and he lost everything in the Holocaust. He came to self-help for social services. As he's gotten older, it's become critical for him to share his story publicly for his own healing and to make sure this never happens again. He knew self-help would understand how important this was to him since self-help operates the oldest and largest program for survivors in North America. My action learning plan is to expand our capacity to help survivors of the Holocaust to bear witness to their experiences. Survivors are aging and frail and they need to pass on their stories now more than ever. At Self-Help, we have been working with survivors for almost 85 years. They have expressed the need to tell their story and bear witness to their experience with the goal of preventing atrocities from happening again to Jews and any other group of people. These staggering realities come at the time when the last generation of Holocaust survivors and first-hand witnesses to history are aging and into their 80s and 90s. The need to share these stories and its lessons are more relevant today than ever. We have witnessed a significant rise in anti-Semitic incidences, police brutality, and social injustice around the world. At Self-Help, we've seen very successful models work, including using drama therapy and art as vehicles for storytelling, as a way to engage the public in learning about these experiences. Stories need to be shared with the broadest possible audiences. These models are adaptable across all dem demographics and geography. According to one source, a majority of older adults report experiencing at least one trauma in their life. And this call to action is for all older adults. We need you to pass on your stories of trauma to the younger generation. One Holocaust survivor I know said it best. I survived and I must tell my story now to make sure this never happens again to any person. Now is the time to act. Please, please don't forget. Don't forget. Don't forget. Don't forget. Don't forget. Hi, my name is David Sim uh, from Butner Westminster Place in Longview, Texas. And my ALP is supporting our families uh, to support our elders. I chose this topic uh, because we have several associates that do have uh, small children at home uh, to take care of. And one of the biggest challenges that I hear is uh, you know, who's going to be able to watch my child today while I'm at work, or uh, I can't pick up an extra shift because I don't have somebody that can watch my child. And uh, it can be daycares too expensive, or they don't have any other family around uh, that can do that. And so what I'm working to do is to try to create new uh, partnerships in our community uh, with different organizations. That way we can have a affordable daycare option that is 24-7 uh, for our associates and for other healthcare workers as well. And this would benefit uh, us because uh, if our uh, associates are taken care of, they know their children are taken care of and their families, then uh, that puts them in a much better uh, place. It allows us to be able to recruit uh, new high talent that can work in our evening and our night shifts and uh, just kind of take care of everybody there, which also then takes care of our, uh, res as our elders as well. And uh, the things that uh, the leadership principles that I've been learning through this process is just to kind of keep moving forward, even if uh, there's not a clear path of how to move forward, there is a way, and it's just trying to find that way uh, and uh, to be successful and complete our goals. Uh, thank you very much. My name is Brandy Stavenko, representing the Jewish Home Family in Rockley, New Jersey. My action learning project is The Hero's Journey, Telling Our Story. Even as a small child, I knew my passion, my calling was to work in elder services. It never occurred to me it wasn't everyone's passion. Recent events have shaken me. I'm disheartened. No, I'm angry. I'm angered by the lack of support and understanding for our industry and for our healthcare workers. The story the media portrays is one of pain, loss, suffering, isolation, neglect, abuse, and even death. However, I know a different story. 
I know the story of Orla, who in the midst of a pandemic called and asked, what can I do? Where can I help? Orla, who came to work every day to provide health screenings for every team member and every visitor to ensure the safety of our elders. Orla, who after witnessing a family member collapse in distress, simply went to her, helped her up, and assisted her in donning her PPE. I know the story of Blanca, who after caring for and losing her mother to COVID, contracted the virus herself. When Blanca was admitted to our facility, she was so weak she could barely raise her hand. But through the compassion, dedication, and skill of our team, Blanca walked out of our home on her own. I know the story of over 500 employees who, although fearful for their own safety, simply blew kisses to their loved ones before coming in to care for our elders. Staff who at times have felt ostracized, villainized, and abandoned by a healthcare system that does not understand their worth. Yet they show up every day, smiling behind their masks. Joseph Campbell suggests that every human narrative is a variation of one story that crosses time, geography, culture, age, and gender. That one story, the hero's journey, our journey. The Leadership Academy has taught me that as leaders, we must dig deep. We must create a compelling reason for involvement. People don't desire products, nor do they solicit services, and they don't work where they don't feel valued. Staff long for feelings, the feelings of compassion, empathy, and pride that working in elder services can provide. It is my belief that in sharing our story, our hero's journey will inspire others to want to be a part of our journey. I want to challenge you today to share your journey. My name is Brian Tuckman and my action learning project for the lines of the care model. For most of my career, I've been involved in for-profit sector acquisitions and development of new assisted livings and memory cares. The focus was always on how efficient we could be and how we could quickly build. This led to seniors being boxed into our care models. Three years ago, when I joined Salem Town, a not-for-profit life plan community, the discussion started to change. Watching our residents move through the continuing continuum highlighted more issues. Like most communities, we see a heavy resistance from residents who need to move from one care level to another. These moves are often forced by our policies, regulations, and inefficiencies. After a master planning process, including focus groups, I started to hear the residents. I want to stay where I am. I just need more care. I don't want to be separated from my spouse. Why don't I have a choice? We need to do better. Everyone should be able to map their own path through the continuum. We need to facilitate their choices. I envision a community where the lines of care are blurred, where we have discussions on what is the resident's choice for their care and not what is the easiest, most efficient way to deliver care. We need to focus on building units that a resident can stay in as they age. Units that can be independent, assisted, and dementia safe if needed. Expanding technology will also allow us more flexibility, eliminating some staff intensive tasks that force residents into levels for our efficiency. Our seniors will benefit from staying in control of their lives. Choices they have earned through a lifetime of independence and self-reliance. Throughout the action learning proce project process, I have learned the importance of getting others excited. I am learning that fundamental change starts small and will take an army, but if you have a good idea and are passionate about it, you can get others to follow. Thank you. Hi, this is Andy Van Orden from Fellowship Senior Living in Basking Ridge. The title of my project is Staffing Shortages, Let's Get Intentional. This is what a job fair looks like in the long-term care system for direct care workers. Why is that? Why is our industry struggling to attract and retain candidates to these critically important positions? As a care provider myself, I am passionate about quality resident care in aging services and can't think of a more important factor than staffing that impacts the quality of resident care. Staffing shortages are not a new problem, but the COVID-19 pandemic has brought this issue into greater focus and unfortunately is only projected to get worse. In fact, between 2018 and 2028, there are projected to be over 8 million job openings in direct care. We all need to be concerned with how we are going to fill these over 8 million positions in the next eight years. And it's not enough to just fill those positions. We need to attract great workers to our field 
And when they sign up, they need to find an environment that fully respects and values their contributions. The environment needs to motivate and empower fully engaged work that supports high quality services. No doubt there are obstacles in the way. Right now, there's a real fear of getting sick, a fear of bringing COVID back home to family, low pay, the stress of covering extra shifts to meet resident needs, juggling personal and uh, childcare costs, and increasing medical acuities of those we serve, and the list goes on. It makes one wonder how it's possible to overcome such industry-wide challenges. The short answer is that we have to. Our seniors need to us to figure this out. No doubt big changes such as immigration reform and moving towards more competitive wages will be part of the solution, but we also need to fundamentally change how we value these key positions. We need to be proactive and intentional as we identify opportunities for change while also creating opportunities to make the care environment more welcoming to the over 8 million people that we need to enter our, this workforce by 2028. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Ariana Via Padua, and um, I my organization is Mount San Antonio Gardens, and we are located in Pomona, California. The name of my ALP project is the Lotus Legacy Project: Cultivating the Future. So, why the Lotus Project? Um, the lotus grows in, under the dirtiest waters, and it blossoms into this beautiful, gorgeous flower. And so I feel that and I can resonate that with our residents and our staff members. And as our residents are going through different changes and as they are moving throughout the different continuum of care, they we have cultivated and created a, a place where they can really grow and blossom and be the best version of themselves. The same thing for our staff members. They really have the opportunity to grow when they are here um, as part of the gardens. And so the way that I envision this, our campus is gorgeous and beautiful. Um, for our residents, we currently have written biographies for them, but I would like for us to video record them so that in turn, as they are transitioning through the different, different levels of care, we can have those recordings of them to share with their families and share the good times, the different times, the bad times, and be able to gift that to families if and when residents pass. And the way that I would envision this for our staff members is when they come on board with us is do a little interview with them and you know have a so that our residents can get to know our employees better and, and we can also help them grow within the organization and really and truly be able to, to show and continue to grow, not just as individuals and not just grow the rest of our campus grounds, but to cultivate and to grow every individual that sets foot on our campus because really and truly the culture of the gardens is to nurture every, each and every person who is here. Thank you. My name is Jacob Will. I'm from Oklahoma Methodist Manor in Tulsa and this is the artist inside the elder. When was the last time that you created something whether it be art, music, poetry, drawing and if not do you have the resources to do that? Now, what about the elders? And just think about the most simple form of art is in like painting. You know, how does art make you feel both when you see it or when you're creating it? And if we all have this shared understanding that an art therapy program is is wonderful, why don't we have these things? Why don't we have original pieces of art for people to not only to see and engage in, but to start conversations with? You know, for some individuals that aren't able to communicate verbally, art gives them another avenue in which to express themselves and, and let us know what their wants and needs may be. These examples are things that individuals at the community that I live or that I work at created. And they'll soon be on display with many others for people to enjoy and to be inspired by. And something unique about these is that these three things were created by individuals that no longer live here. Because you see, art is part of our legacy. And are we giving people a way to leave their legacy in our own physical space in our culture? Now, I want you to go back and see your own home and what's on those walls and how does that connect to you? And then go into those elder spaces and what's there? How does that make you feel? How does that connect 
to the individuals living there. We need to find the time and the resources to allow people to create. We need to bring in original pieces that not only entertain, but really engage us in those conversations and find ways that elders can create themselves. Because anytime you create something, you are an artist. Thank you.